Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. We got a Basho coming up. Haru Basho 2022, Osaka, Japan. First time in three years they're going to have a crowd, and I imagine they're going to have a fantastic time, but for us, it's time to talk some fantasy sumo. <laughs> Our main focus here is going to be big bracket-based competitions. We're going to look at each bracket, Yokozuna Ozeki, Sekiwake Komasubi, and then the different Magashira brackets, see who the best picks are going to be from each of those, and along the way we'll have a talk about who might be a secretly good late-round pick in the draft leagues. So without further ado, let's get this kicked off. Ever since he came back to the top division in July of 2020, Terunofuji Fuji has been an absolute lock of a selection if you are a fantasy sumo fan. No matter what kind of competition you're in, this is your guy. Or he has been. Now, that's not to say that he has somehow fallen off. By no means is that the case. You can pick Teru in this competition, and man, you are going to be fine. However, he hurt his heel at the end of the January Basho. If it affected him in his last few matches, it probably made the difference with him losing the tournament to Matakeyumi, although it's fair to say Matakeyumi was doing a pretty good job and may have taken the whole thing anyway. But Yokozuna Terunofuji has been an absolute monster overall. And while some people are hardcore Takakesho stands, there really hasn't been any competition for the Yokozuna and Ozeki title in Fantasy Sumo until now. And of course, I'm talking about Matakeyumi. Mataki Umi just made Ozaki. He is on a roll. He won 11 fights in uh, November, and he won 13 in January to take the title. This is the best he's done in a two-tournament stretch in his career period. And a lot of people are looking to him to really keep ramping up his game and maybe make a Yokozuna run. So the question here is, do you trust Terano Fuji to not get hurt or simply to be healthy from the start or do you trust Mitake Yumi more to keep rolling on his 13 win form so let's simplify this down let's say you don't know anything about the wrestlers and you're just looking at the feats they have to accomplish to be the best in the bracket Terano Fuji just has to be healthy Mitake Yumi has to be a world beater that right there gives Terano Fuji the advantage Matakiyumi is a perfectly good choice, there's nothing wrong with him, and he may end up having more wins at the end of this Basho. But if you have to take a guess going in at who's going to do better, are you going to take the guy who had 13 wins last time and only did that once before in his entire career, or the guy who has just about averaged 13 wins over the last year and a half? Terano Fuji is definitely the safer pick here, and Matakiyumi is the pick only if you are genuinely concerned that Terano Fuji's knees, heel, or some other part of his body will break down and send him out of the tournament early. As for the other Ozeki, Takakesho is very good. He's still very good. There's no reason to think that he's incapable of getting 12 or 13 wins all of a sudden. He just did it back in November, 12 and 3, got the Jun Yu show. But at the moment, he's Kadoban. He needs to worry about getting eight wins first. And as long as he can do that, he's probably going to be happy because his Ozeki rank won't be at risk. He essentially has the kind of injury risk that Terano Fuji has with the ceiling that Matakiyumi has. So he's not as good a pick as either of them. And then Shodai is, well, Shodai. He hasn't won 10 fights since January of 2021. He repeatedly says in interviews that he's not happy with his sumo, that he has bad feelings going into fights, going into tournaments. And while in theory he could end up doing better than anybody else in that bracket, the truth is that if you pick him in this tournament, you're trolling. So for this bracket, we're looking at Terra Fuji as your number one pick. Probably 11 plus wins as long as he stays healthy. Takakesho and Matakiyumi could end up anywhere from 9 to 12. That's probably a safe range, although it is admittedly a pretty big range. And Shodai's going to be lucky if he's still in Ozeki after this tournament. Now we're going to move on to the Komusubi and Sekiwake. And boy, oh boy, is this bracket interesting. I am going to spend most of my time talking about Abi because there is a particular circumstance going on here. And that is, is Abi on an Ozeki run? Now, that's not to say that Abi is going to make Ozeki in the next tournament, no matter how many wins he gets in this one. The guidelines for being Ozeki say that you have to have at least 33 wins in the previous three tournaments and be a Sekiwake. It does not say that you have to be a Sekiwake for all three of those tournaments. Now, he had 12 wins and 12 wins, and he's a Sekiwake now, 
so in theory, he only needs nine. Now, there's no way that he's going to make Ozeki in the next tournament, no matter what he does in this one. And let me talk about why. So, two tournaments ago, he was Maegashira 15. In this past tournament, he was Maegashira 6. Tachii.org, a couple years ago, did a really interesting database search where they looked up how many wins it actually took for somebody to make Ozeki. Uh, how often did they get it with 32 wins? How often did they not get it, even though they got 33 wins? And some numbers stick out when we think about Abby's case. One, at 32 wins, 33 wins, and even 34 wins, there wasn't a guarantee of being pushed to Ozeki. At 32, it was less than 50%. At 33, it was something like 70%. But only at 35 wins was everybody who got there guaranteed to make Ozeki. In addition, the search only included people whose first tournament in their Ozeki run started at Maegashira 4 or higher. Now, Abi started at Maegashira 15 in this quote-unquote run. There's no way they're going to count that. The level of competition is too low. So you can discount that 12-win tournament. But he had 12 wins in the last tournament at Maegashira 6. Will they count that? We really don't know. They can say, well, he was only Maegashira 6, so we don't want to use that if they want a reason to not give him Ozaki when it looks like he should otherwise make it. They can also say, well... Even though it was Maegashira 6, he did a great job, got the Jun Yu Show, had 12 wins, 12 wins for the second tournament in a row, no less, if they want to have a reason to give him Ozaki. So that one can play either way. So let's think about if they're going to give him Ozaki with the Maegashira 6 tournament included. That means he has a 12-win tournament already on his record. He needs 21 over the next two. Can he do that at Sekiwake? Yeah, he definitely can do that at Sekiwake. Does he think that if he does it at Sekiwake, he's going to get Ozeki? Well, if you listen to his interviews, he says that he's not really thinking about it, but he wants to fight in an Ozeki level. Yeah, you're thinking about it, dude. Let's be honest. And that's got to add some motivation. So really, this is about can the other wrestlers at these high ranks beat him despite the fact that he can absolutely beat them and he's got every reason to want to do it right now while he's got a 12-win tournament on his record that can help push him to Ozeki. If he starts out struggling, if he starts out with a losing record over the first half of the tournament, something like that, considering he's almost certainly not going to make Ozeki with just 21 wins in the next two tournaments, he'd probably need to get 11 and 11, 11 and 12, something like that. Maybe that starts to kill his motivation. Maybe you start to see him flag a little bit. And you know what? Maybe he's just not capable of keeping up the kind of records that he's been getting when his entire tournament consists of fighting the guys at the highest ranks in sumo. But if you look at how he's been fighting over the last two tournaments since he got back to the Makauchi division, man, it's really hard to doubt his ability to keep this rolling and finish on top of this bracket against only three other guys. His main competition in this bracket will be Wakataka Kage. Now, Wakataka Kage has been in the Sanyaku one time for one tournament as a Komasubi, and he won 5 and 10. So that would, if you're just looking at the superficial aspect of this, seem like, oh, maybe he's going to struggle. But at Maegashira 1, in the last tournament, he went 9 and 6, and he fought all of the toughest guys. The easiest parts of his schedule were against Maegashira 8, Tobizaru, and Maegashira 13, Chiyomaru. He's not going to have anything that easy again, but outside of those fights... He was 7-6. and six. He still had a winning record, and there's no reason to think he can't get another winning record here. The thing is, he's probably going to max out at 8, maybe 9 wins. Maybe. It's hard to see him somehow getting 10 wins all of a sudden when he couldn't do it at Maegashira 1. Of course, you can believe that's true and also think he's going to do better than Abi if you think Abi's going to fall apart. But right now, as far as upside goes, it's hard to see Wakataka Kage as having more than Abi. Abi probably caps out at 11 or 12 wins if he's absolutely on point. Even the best version of Wakataka Kage right now may be lucky to get 10, probably 9, very good chance of getting 8. As for the Komasubi, a lot of people were excited to see Hoshoryu make Maegashira 1 back in September. But then he lost some fights, he had strep throat, he finished with only 5 wins, dropped back to Maegashira 5. That's the highest he's been in his career by quite some margin. Now, he's really young. He's only 22. He's also on the smaller side at a little over 130 kilograms. But guys at 22 do some incredible things in sumo, and 130 kilograms is only a little bit smaller than the smallest Yokozuna in the last 30 years. So he's there. He's got the talent. He's got 
pretty much the size. He's starting to get the experience where he can do better and better. But right now, he's got no track record of being able to succeed above Magashira 5 or 6, where he's only got to fight a handful of Sanyaku wrestlers. Now, if you've been doing fantasy sumo for a little while, you may have noticed that being successful sometimes means picking the guy who hasn't succeeded at a certain level before during the tournament when he finally pulls it off. This might be the time to pick Hoshoryu for that reason. But at the moment, he's done nothing, granted, without much of an opportunity to do so. But so far, he's done nothing to suggest that at Komasubi, he's going to be successful. He's going to be an 8, 9, 10 win wrestler. It would be fantastic for the sport if he could do it because he's extremely popular. But as of right now, he has to be looked at as a high-risk option. On the flip side, Takano Sho is probably less risky, but also with less upside. Over the past couple years, he's been Sekiwake for several tournaments. He's been High Maegashira. He has consistently performed, and he's never done terribly. Outside of Sekiwake 1 in May of 2021, having a 5-10 record, he's had at least 7 wins in every tournament for the last couple of years. He's really unlikely to completely tank your efforts. He's not going to take your team and throw it in the dumpster. But he's also probably not going to be the guy that carries you to victory unless everybody else does a pretty poor job as well. So for this bracket, odds are Abi is going to do the best job. At the very least, he's got the best upside and probably the best floor. Wakataka Kage is a close second. Hoshoryu and Takanosho, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a safer pick, Takanosho is probably your guy. If you need somebody who might have a pop-off kind of moment, Hoshoryu might be your better option. For the Magashira brackets, I'm going to speak more broadly and not talk about every single wrestler. We're just going to get into the ones who have a reasonable shot of doing the best in their brackets and the ones who you really, really need to avoid. For Magashira 1 through 5, don't be surprised if nobody gets 10 wins. These guys have the hardest schedules, and when people do get 10, 11, even 12 wins out of this bracket, it's frequently somebody where you look at that guy and say, oh, I didn't think he was ever going to do that well. Probably the most reliable option is Mese. In July of 2020, he won the Jiryo Yusho. He had five consecutive Maegashira Kachikoshis, then one at Komasubi and one at Sekiwake. Then he went seven and eight at Sekiwake, dropped to Komasubi, went five and ten in January, and now he's down at Maegashira 3 West. It should be noted that none of those Kachikoshis were super impressive except for the one at Maegashira 3 East in March of 2021 when he got ten wins. The rest were all eight and seven or nine and six. If you're looking for a pretty safe bet for Akachi Koshi from this bracket, Meisei is almost certainly the guy. If you're looking for someone with a little more upside, then you might want to go with Daisho instead. He hasn't fallen below Magashira 4 since January of 2019, and in the last couple years he's had four double-digit win tournaments. 11-4 at Komosubi 1, 10-5 at Magashira 2, 13-2 where he won the Yusho in Magashira 1, and then 10-5 at Magashira 4. The downside is that he also has a couple of five-win tournaments in that stretch, one at Sekiwake and the other one at Maegashira 1. In fact, his last two tournaments at Maegashira 1, he had five wins and eight wins respectively. So, the question between Meisei and Daesho is really about your taste for risk. If you want to minimize your risk, you probably want to go with Meisei. If you're willing to trade the risk of a really bad tournament for somebody who has a better track record of pulling off double-digit wins at the highest levels of sumo, Daesho is more your pick. As much as I love watching Ura fight and really, really want to say that he's in a good position to totally kill it in this tournament and rack up a bunch of wins, it's just not that likely. He seems like he's starting to hit his limit. I would not be surprised if he gets either seven or eight wins, and that seven and eight wins are really what we start seeing from him for many tournaments from here on out. So Daesho's the high upside pick, Meisei's the safer pick. If you're in a draft league and you need guys after that, I would say Takara Fuji or Ichino Joe are going to be your best options. And absolutely, for the love of God, do not pick Ishiura. As far as I can tell, he's never fought a Senyaku level wrestler in his career because the highest rank he's ever been was Maegashira 9. Now he's going to fight three or four of them. He's going to get absolutely steamrolled in this tournament. And if he gets more than five wins, I'd honestly be kind of surprised. For Maegashira 6 through 10, we really need to just look at the top three guys. Hokuto Fuji, Kotonowaka, and Takiyasu. Hokuto Fuji first. If you look at his record, this guy is rated way too low at Megashira 6 East. His worst rankings for 2019, 20, and 21 were 5 West, 
for East, and then after he dropped out of a tournament at Magashira 2, he dropped down to Magashira 12 West. At 12 West, he finished 11-4. and four. So he's really, really good, and he's very consistently high-ranked. So the question becomes, why did he have a bad tournament at Magashira 4 last time? I'm sure it came as a surprise to a lot of people, myself included, to see him only pick up six wins at that rank. So why did it happen? Who did he fight? And can we take anything from that, especially in terms of how did he do against the people he's likely to fight this time? So first, let's look at his losses. His first three losses were to Onisho, Hoshoryu, and Abi, who obviously had fantastic tournaments, and it's really no shame to have lost to them in January. Ura, who did fine. He got one 8-7, and seven, one up in rank. He's Magashira 1 now. Tamawashi, another 8-7. and seven. He did fine. Terno Fuji, you know, never shameful to lose to the Yokozuna. He lost to Shodai. Well, I might talk a lot of smack about Shodai, but he is Nozeki for a reason, so that's not terrible. He lost to Daisho. Daisho was Komasubi. Again, no shame there. And he lost to Teretsuyoshi, which who knows why that happened. So one weird loss out of nine. That's not that bad. Now, how many of these guys is he likely to fight next time? Onosho's Megashira 3, maybe. Hoshoryu is Komasubi, and Abi is Sekiwake. At Megashira 6, they generally fight two Sanyaku wrestlers. If you look at Hoshoryu's schedule from last time, because he was in the same rank, he fought one Ozeki, one Sekiwake. If Okutu Fuji were to fight the exact same ranked guys that Hoshoryu fought, it would be Takakesho and Abi. Now, obviously, that's not a given. But, you know, Takakesho is obviously very good, but who knows if he's even still going to be in the tournament. And Abi, so what? If Abi beats Hokuto Fuji, that doesn't mean that Hokuto Fuji is going to have a bad tournament. Ura's rank one. He's probably not going to fight him. Tamawashi is Magashira two. That probably isn't happening. Terano Fuji, Yokozuna, they basically never fight Magashira six, so that won't happen. Shodai, again, Ozeki could happen. Daisho is Magashira one now, shouldn't happen. And then, you know, Teretsuyoshi was just an oddball loss. Well, now let's look at his wins. He beat Endo, rank four, probably going to fight him. Chiyoshoma, rank eight, good chance he's going to fight him. Takara Fuji, rank five, almost certainly going to fight him. Matakiumi, who is an Ozeki, and he could fight him, but he's also 11 and 12 lifetime against Matakiumi. I'm not saying he's 50 50 to beat him this time, but it's not hopeless. And he, again, he did beat him in January. Mese, rank three, you know, decent chance they fight. And Kirabeyama, who's rank four, there's a pretty good chance he'll fight him too. So the guys he beat, he has a much better chance of seeing than the guys he lost to. And now that he's lower rank, his schedule should be a lot easier than it was, not just last time, but than it's been in quite a while outside of that Magashira 12 tournament. So he has an excellent chance to put up a big, big score this time. Next, let's talk about Kotonowaka. This is a much simpler conversation because it's really about how much do you believe in youth and potential. Since the start of 2021, which is only seven tournaments, Kotonowaka has put up three double-digit win tournaments. He also has a six, a seven, a three, and a six in there. Though in fairness, in the three, he missed the last five fights due to injury. A lot of people believe in him because he's only 24, he's shown a lot of potential, he's done really well against Magashira level wrestlers, and when he's on, he's on. Furthermore, in the last tournament, on the last day, he fought Abi, and even though he lost that fight, he put up a hell of a battle. If you wanted to see something good out of Katona Waka against a high-level opponent, him losing that fight might have been as meaningful as any of the wins that he had. And that brings up the question that's going to hang over all of his tournaments until he makes it stop. How is he going to do at a single-digit Magashira rank? Magashira 3 is when he had the 3 wins and the exit due to injury. Magashira 8 is when he had 6 wins. Because he's young and increasingly popular, a lot of people think, you know, now's the time, now's the time. But they've thought that before, and so far their faith has not been rewarded. Maybe this is the time that it changes. For everybody who ends up at a higher rank, they don't just go straight to the top if that's where they're going to be. Sometimes they go up and down for a while before they figure it out. That could be the case for this guy. This could be the tournament where he turns it all around and, you know, goes on a pure upward trajectory. Maybe he doesn't do it till he's 26 or 27 and the people who believe in him now are disappointed again. 
I think he is on the rise. I don't think that it's a given he's going to do poorly just because he's done poorly at his other higher-ranked tournaments in the past, but he really still feels like a trap. I think he could get a Kachikoshi, but eight wins is going to be a fortunate outcome for him, and if you're looking for a good fantasy pick, that's not good enough. And that brings us to the return of Papa Yasu. The fan favorite is back after what has been an unfortunate string of tournaments. Just a year ago, he was a Sekiwake, and then he had seven wins in a tournament where he had to miss the first couple of fights. And then he got launched out of the ring by Terano Fuji and hurt himself in a tournament where he was already doing poorly. And then at Maigashira 5, where a lot of people thought he was probably going to do really well because that was so much lower than where they were used to seeing him, he only pulled off six wins. Now at Maigashira 7, what can we expect? This one's a little tricky. A lot of people want to believe that he's going to come back as strong as ever because he was an Ozeki forever, and you know he was a high-level Senyaku wrestler for a lot of tournaments outside of his Ozeki run. But this is a guy who went from finishing one tournament in five from July 2019 to March of 2020, went on a run of six straight Kachikoshis, including four tournaments where he got ten wins, then had three Makikoshis in a row before his entire stable had to sit out the last tournament due to a COVID quarantine. So which Takayasu is going to show up this time? Because it's so hard to say, I did the same thing for him that I did for Hokuto Fuji, and I looked up his last tournament, the one from November of 2021, to see if we could draw any information from that. So again, let's look at his losses first. He lost to Miyogiryu, who in fairness was on a roll, uh, but they're probably going to fight this time. He lost to Ura, Magashira won, they're not going to fight. He lost to Tamawashi, Maikashira 2, they're not going to fight. Lost to Terano Fuji, not happening. Shodai, not happening. Matakiyumi, not happening. Takakesho, not happening. He lost to Hidenoumi, who got punted right out of the division due to a gambling scandal. And he lost to Daisho, who, again, he will not be fighting. Now, who did he beat? Endo, who's Maikashira 4, that could happen. Takara Fuji, Maikashira 5, decent chance of that happening. Shimanaumi, that could happen, around the same rank. Hoshoryu, not happening. Chiyoshoma, Magashira 8, probably going to fight him. And Onosho, who's Magashira 3, that one's not happening. So again, we have another fighter whose last tournament, the people he beat, he's a lot more likely to see this time than the people he lost to. By the way, just as a point of clarification, when I say he's not going to fight these guys, I mean... A regular schedule should not have him fighting them unless they get matched up due to record or something. They're too far apart in rank to expect these matchups to occur, but there's always a possibility. Beyond those three, it really depends on how much you believe in any of the specific wrestlers that are left in the bracket. Is Okunoumi an ageless wonder? When he drops to these mid-level ranks, he does actually tend to do okay, and he hasn't been in these middle ranks very much in the last few years because he's been higher up, so he is a pretty good wrestler. In some situations, he might be a better choice, but he's just not set up for success quite as much as Hokuto Fuji or Takiyasu, or, again, if you believe in the youth of Katonawaka. Chiyoshoma's just a guy at rank 8. He's probably going to end up with 8 wins because that seems to be what he always does. Maybe you believe in Wakamoto Haru, even though he's older than Wakataka Kage and probably is not going to reach the same heights. The only other person I'm going to bring up is Aoyama. Not because I think he's going to do really well, but because he is an absolute wild card, specifically because it's March. In the last three March tournaments, he's totaled 34 wins, which is crazy for a guy who can barely get a Kachikoshi outside of that. Is he going to do it again this time? Well, in the last two tournaments, he was ranked 12 and 13, and now he's 10. He's a little bit higher, but if there's something magical about the March tournament that gets him going, maybe, maybe he gets another 11 wins. Who's to say? I really doubt it. He seemed injured last tournament, and definitely the tournament before that. If he can only get eight wins at Mega Share 16, it seems really unlikely he's going to do much better this time. But hey, if you believe in superstitions or patterns, you know, maybe this is your guy. So for the 6-10 to 10 bracket, we're going with Hokuto Fuji as the best choice, Takayasu as second, Kotonowaka, maybe Okonoumi if you really don't believe in Kotonowaka as third, and then after those two guys, it's really whoever you prefer. And now, Maigashira at 11-17, which is an absolute disaster waiting to happen. 
Here we have 14 wrestlers who, if you exclude Tochi Notion, since he's a shadow of the wrestler he was as an Ozeki, have barely shown the slightest sign of life when they've achieved any rank outside of this bracket. Making it a little weirder still is that Chio Tairu, Chio Maru, and Chio no Kuni, who are all from the same stable, are also ranked right next to each other. And since they're from the same stable, they're not going to fight each other. So who do they fight in those two that they should have had against the guys near their own rank? Do they get to go down and clown on Ichi Yamamoto when they otherwise wouldn't have had the chance? Do they have to go up? Are they going to have to fight Takiyasu or Okonoumi, who are going to have a much better chance of beating them? Probably the most useful thing we can do is start with the four guys who've moved up from Jurio from this tournament. Kodoshoho, Nishikigi, Kodokuzan, and Kagiyaki. The rest of the wrestlers in this bracket have been around long enough that what we can expect from them is that they will do perfectly okay. So can any of these guys who have moved up surprise us and jump ahead of everyone else? And the short answer is probably not. <laughs> Nishikigi spent a long time in Maegashira, but for the last almost two years has been in Jurio. Even when he was a Maegashira wrestler, he was never that impressive and rarely spent much time at the higher ranks. At Maegashira 16 East, there's a really good chance he eats a Makikoshi and goes right back down. Kagiyaki is the other experienced Maegashira wrestler of the bunch. Now, he spent a long time in Maegashira, from 2016 all the way up till November of 2021. He went 5-10 and 10 at Maegashira 14, dropped out to Jiryo 1 for one tournament, and now he's back up. He's a Maegashira regular, he's still relatively young at 27, and there's no reason to think that he can't stick at this level as long as he has a halfway decent tournament. There's nobody underranked in this group to give him that one loss that sticks him at 7 wins instead of 8 and sends him right back down. Kota Kuzan's got a really good story. He joined Pro Sumo when he was 15, was stuck in Makushita Division 3 for over 10 years, only made it to Jurio in 2021, and then got kicked right back out when he only got four wins. Made his way back up one tournament later, and in November of 2021 at Jurio 14, got 11 wins. Jumped up to Jurio 4 and got 10 wins. Somehow he managed to figure it out all at once, and now he's a top division wrestler. So how long is it going to last? Honestly, it's hard to say, but probably not very long. Guys who spend 11 or 12 years in Makushita don't just become top division world beaters all of a sudden. It would be cool if he could get a Kachi Koshi and spend a little time in the division, but there's no way to know if that's likely to happen, and even if it does, he's probably going to get sent right back down after no more than two or three tournaments. And that leaves Koto Shoho, who's probably got the best odds of any of the group. He spent five tournaments in 2020 and 2021 at Maegashira, and he did all right. At 15, he had 8 wins. Then at 12, he had 10. He got up to Maegashira 5 and had another Kachikoshi. He went 8-7. and seven. But at Maegashira 3, he went 2-13. and 13. He lost his first 11 fights. The whole thing was a disaster. There's a reasonable chance he was hurt at the time, although I really don't know. His next tournament at Maegashira 11, he lost his first two fights and then dropped out for most of the rest of the tournament. He came back briefly, only managed one win, and fell right out to Jurio. In Jurio, he had two more Makikoshis before turning it around, which would suggest that he was still hurt. Then he had 9 wins, 8 wins, and 11 wins, and he won the Yusho in the last tournament. So if he's recovered from whatever caused him to fall so hard out of the higher Maegashira ranks, there's really no reason to think that he's got a lot of competition in this bracket. The logical person to give him a run, assuming Kota Shoho goes on a run, would be Miyogiryu. At Maegashira 10 in 2020, he went 10 and 5, and again in September of 2021, he went 11 and 4, finished second. But last tournament at Maegashira 10, he only had five wins and dropped out for a couple of fights. He started 4 and 0, then he lost five fights in a row. There's a pretty good chance that he got hurt. So has he recovered? If he has, if he's totally healed, he's got an excellent chance of putting up a really good score at Maegashira 11. But if he hasn't recovered, then picking him is an absolute trap. He may not even finish the tournament, much less pull together a number of wins that makes him worth your selection. But if you don't pick one of those guys, who do you pick? This entire bracket is full of mid to low tier Magashira wrestlers who rarely ever come up on big scores. And in pretty much every case, you're going to pick a guy because you think he's going to get 8 wins and you just hope that he'll get 10 or 11 like Ishiura did and be a nice surprise. For this bracket then, we're going to tag Miyogiryu and Kotoshoho as the two best options. 
Mio Gear used the pick if you're willing to take a risk of injury or age just catching up with a guy in order to have somebody with a good track record at this rank. And Kotoshoho is the pick if you're willing to believe that his string of recent performances show that this wrestler who has proven himself, albeit briefly, of reaching a high Maegashira rank is recovered and ready to roll through a relatively weak bottom of the division. Wrestlers to avoid would be the already discussed Nishikigi and Kotokuzan, Ichi Yamamoto, who keeps doing incredibly well in Jiryo and absolutely collapsing in Maegashira, and Tochinoshin, who remains a fan favorite, but he's fighting on one leg and hasn't had a winning score since 2020. Between the first two and the last four, everybody blends into each other so much that if you really need to pick one of them, just grab an eight-sided die and roll it. And that's going to do it for our coverage of your fantasy picks for the Haru Basho 2022 in Osaka, Japan. Remember that we'll be back throughout the tournament with predictions for each day's match schedule, so look for those and we'll see you soon. Thank you.